Good morning. My name is James Blackwell. I'm an academic F2 doctor at Royal Derby Hospital. This morning I've got with me Mr John Lund, consultant colorectal surgeon, and today we're going to discuss the abdominal examination. Good morning, John. Oh, morning, James. Um, thanks very much. Well, uh, first thing you see me doing here is washing my hands, and of course that's extremely important um, both for patient safety, stopping the spread of infection, and uh, also when you're in an OSCE exam, it's very important that the examiner sees you wash your hands before and afterwards. Uh, it's a very important uh, skill to demonstrate. Okay. So here I'm standing at the end of the bed, and this is an important place to start your examination. You can pick up a lot from the end of the bed, see the general health of the patient, what they look like, whether they're look it pale or cyanotic or flushed or ill and that's the main thing, are they well or ill, have a look around the bed for other things like inhalers or GTN spray or other signs of illness and uh, and then get them to cough and coughing will show any hernia that you might have. Right, you just let me have your hands please on the other one, thank you. Here we are looking at the hands, it's important to start with the hands and look for all the signs of the hands you can see now listed on the screen and uh, check for Jupiter's contracture and then look over the hands there and now we're looking for clubbing and clubbing is associated with various uh, GI conditions that again we've listed on the screen and now this is looking for a liver flap which isn't there very often I've seen it a few times the patient might be pretty jaundiced as well and you can see the hands flapping asymmetrically so it twitches at the wrist and I'm taking the pulse and uh, I don't have a watch on as part of the bare below the elbows uh, policy uh, but I am looking at the clock on the wall and then it's important to take it for about 20 seconds or so multiplied by three to get a rough estimate of the actual pulse rate. Hmm. And presumably you could look at the obs chart as well? Yeah the obs charts are often at the end of the bed and uh, it's important to look at the blood pressure and the temperature when looking at the obs charts and that's another thing to do at the end of the bed. So we're checking for anemia, have a look at the sclera to make sure they're not yellow and then have a look in the tongue see if there's geographical tongue or other tongue signs, any mouth ulceration which can occasionally be a sign of Crohn's disease. And now feeling for lymph nodes. Now the important one is in the left supraclavicular fossa, which is called Verkhoff's node, the top of the um, chain coming up from the abdomen as it drains uh, into the thoracic duct. And if that's enlarged, called Toisier sign, and uh, it's not infrequently enlarged in gastric or esophageal cancers mm. particularly. So it's important to lie the patient flat and that relaxes the tummy, get the patient to relax and then have a look across the tummy. I notice well. you change your position there. Yeah, so get down on one knee and look across the patient and you can see anything bulging out. When you get into cough you might see another incision hernia. And if you've got an aneurysm you may see that pulsating from the side as you look across. And then here, just, just gentle, ask the patient if it hurts, if it, does, if it indicates I'm going to start away from the pain, then just gentle. Uh, palpation and just and when you're doing this it's really important to look at the patient's face mm. uh, not at your hand but at your face and just to see if there's any sign so if they if they have peritoneal irritation at this point they're going to wince a little bit as you get close to the pain you don't want to you don't want to hurt the patient but you want to elicit where it's tender and that'll help you with the diagnosis okay you probably want a bit more exposed here but we've saved our models modesty so you've gone around once gen uh, gently Yep. And now you're pressing slightly deeper. That's right. So now, now you know there's, there's nowhere where there's peritonism and you're not going to hurt the patient. And it's important now to feel deep. And you see I'm doing that with a with the flat of my hand. And seeing just how quite deeply we're getting. I go around all the abdomen like this. And then we're feeling for uh, an abdominal aortic aneurysm. So the aorta divide at the umbilicus. So it's important to feel like that above the umbilicus and you feel the expansile pressure pushing your hands apart if one's pressed. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just to do some things where I'd just like you to take some deep breaths for me when I ask you to. Okay. So now what I'm doing is um, we're palpating for the liver and so you see my hands across the abdomen and the model's taking a deep breath in and as he takes a deep breath in I'm pushing up with the side of my index finger and what you can feel if there's an enlarged liver is the liver coming down past your finger and brushing your finger as it goes. So the diaphragm pushes the liver downwards and the hand pushes it upwards and you can feel one move against the other. And I'm doing the same now for the spleen. It's important to start at the right of that fossa for both liver and spleen. The spleen goes from the left upper quadrant to the right of that fossa 
Um, there are various causes of massive spinal amegaly which you find sometimes. And now what I'm doing is moving the patient over to one side to let spleen flop forward. So if there's sort of m moderate enlargement of the spleen, which is what you often find, the spleen flops towards you can feel it there. Okay. And now feeling for the kidneys, blotting for the kidneys. So I put my hand behind in the renal angle, pull forwards and press forwards in my hand, get the patient to take a breath in, which again pushes the kidneys down a little bit and press forwards. And if you've got large kidneys, you'll be able to feel them there, particularly in something like polycystic kidneys would be way to feel that. And now I'm percussing the abdomen. And this is the technique here. So just take your time to go through it. So you get your um, middle finger and then tap on the over the middle phalanx of the middle finger. And it's it's the sound, so you're going to feel hollow or not hollow, but also the feel as well. So if you practice on yourself, if you if you percuss on your own tummy, you can feel how it should feel, and then perhaps percuss on the on the desk or on your head and and feel the difference as well. So we're pressing it, percussing for the liver now. There's the uh, costal margin. And as I go up above the costal margin, the liver's behind it, I can feel and hear the change in the underlying structure from hollow to hard. And then at the top, I can percuss where the lungs come back in at the top of the liver, which is about the level of the nipples. And you do that because um, if you have a hyperinflated chest, that can push the liver down. Yeah, so you can, feel, you can feel what you might think is in the large liver palpation, but the actual liver's pushed down mm -hmm. quite a long way. Exactly right. So I did the same for the spleen as well. And now I'm listening for bowel sounds. You just need to listen for a while to see if you can hear bowel sounds. Absence of bowel sounds is very important, um, or hyperactive bowel sounds may indicate obstruction. And uh, here I am listening for the renal brewery, so I've changed the bell rather than the diaphragm on the stethoscope, and listening about the level of L1 where the renal arteries come off and uh, for renal breweries. Okay. So we've gone to the order, look, touch, tap, listen. I'm just looking now at more peripheral signs, so just checking for ankle edema. So if there's a liver disease, there may be low albumin and ankle edema or a heart, heart failure is obviously important to assess in a patient that might be undergoing surgery. And then I'm just going to say that we'd examine for the hernial orifices and we'd examine the external genitalia also and check the urine uh, to see if there's any problem with the urine. And, uh, and then obviously do a rectal, digital rectal examination. If you don't put your finger in it, you put your foot in it. It's the old saying, and here I am washing my hands again at the end of the examination. Again, very important thing to do for it, control of infection. Okay, thank you very much.